amen. All right, amen. It is good to be saved. It's good to be in church. 1 John chapter 1. Uh, we're going to start at verse 1. We'll read uh, five verses here. The Apostle John writing. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Then this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Let's pray. Father, again, it is good to be saved. It's good to be in church. And Lord, thank you for bringing everyone to church nice and safe. Lord, we ask you to bless the message and may your words always be spoken. And we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, uh, we got to sing this morning one of my favorite, you know, uh, so it's this little light of mine. The first time I heard it is actually through Eunice and my wife and, and, and one of the choirs they were singing with. And I kind of like that song, so I requested that. And, uh, and it kind of would tie in with the International Food Festival, the Our Light is to Shine, that before everybody, that's everyone in the world. Uh, I like that song. It's, it's neat, really cool. I like that. And I'm going to be preaching on, uh, on the subject of light this morning. All right, I'll be preaching on the subject of light. Now, light, you know, if you ever read a dictionary, sometimes you look at a word, and it'll have like 15 different definitions, and that's what a dictionary does. It explains the many different definitions of light. Now, light has many uh, definitions. Now, one meaning is that uh, light means is having little weight. You know, uh, those five-gallon Poland spring bottles, okay, they're not light, they're heavy. Okay, you know, you did it in a sentence. All right, good, good, good. All right. Light also means uh, easily disturbed. Uh, when I want to sneak out of bed at 2 o'clock in the morning to get a little pint of ice cream, my wife is a light sleeper. And she says, Henry, what are you doing? Uh, nothing, nothing, I'm going to the bathroom, you know? And meanwhile, I'm, I'm sneaking off to the refrigerator. All right? I, I do that. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's right, man. I'm a, I'm a midnight refrigerator raider. All right? Now, light means also capable of moving swiftly. He's light on his feet. So when I'm, you know, sneaking off to the refrigerator, I do my double ninja flip, and I'm um, in and out, back into that bed. Oh, boy, I just got a little bathroom on, and that was it. All right? Light also means having relatively a mild flavor. Some people like their coffee light. That's a New York thing, all right? See, you didn't, see, you're learning the many definitions of the word light. Light also means dizzy, all right? If I don't get my 2 o'clock in the morning ice cream sugar fix, I become a little dizzy and light-headed. <laughs> I'm having fun, all right. Light also means with a lower calorie content or with less of some ingredient. Uh, I do not drink Pepsi light, all right? Give me the full caffeine, sugar, you know, soda, all right? Light also means requiring little effort, you know? Uh, cleaning up, the, cleaning up the, the gym, that was a light effort. It was not a lot of work, all right? Now we're going to get to the, with the, the meaning that I like to preach on. Now, light also means the form of energy that makes it possible to see things. The brightness produced by the sun, by fire, a lamp, a source of light, something that makes vision possible. Then there's the spiritual light or spiritual illumination, the inner light, enlightenment. God is light. In him there is no darkness. All right, we're not going to look at Pepsi light, but we're going to look at God's light. We're going to look at his form or energy that makes us see things. We're going to look at his spiritual illumination, that inner light, enlightenment, or truth. Right, now, the Bible has a lot to say about light. 
All right, our opening text here in John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. Then this is the message that which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. You notice that it says that God is light. That God not is that God is not one of the many lights or is a light. There's only one light, and that light is from God. All right? Buddha's got no light. Muhammad's got no light. Self's got no light. The only one that's got light is God. Amen. There's only one light. God is light. I'm not an English major, but that's in the singular, okay? It says that God is light. This is his essence. This is his nature. In God, he is light. There is no darkness at all. Why? Because God is light. Light penetrates darkness. God is light. God is love. God is wisdom. God is holy. God is just. God is sovereign. God is full of mercy. God is grace. God is kindness. God is long-suffering. God is comfort. All right, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's everywhere. God is our Father. God is good. And God is light. That light is his truth. And God is light. Back in the Bible days, they did not have light bulbs. They did not have TVs. They did not have street lights. They had the sun, and they had fire. That was it. Right, so the picture here that John is drawing and illustrating, we have to kind of put that in, in context here. Is that, and other, Bibles, other writers in the Bible that describe God as light was a simple but vivid description. God is light. All right, there was only two types of light back then, the sun or fire. And God is light, and there is no darkness in God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18 symbolizes uh, righteousness as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Philippians 2.15, light likens God's children, whom ye shine as lights in the world. And that's what we're singing about this morning. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. All right? Again, Philippians 2.15, whom ye are shine as lights in the world. Jesus also told us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before men. That's everyone. That they may see your good works which is good, which glorify our Father in heaven. When we shine the light, it's God's light. He gets the glory. He's just using us as a tool. Just like a flashlight is a tool or a torch is a tool, that little light that we let shine before men and doing our good works is to glorify our Father in heaven. Don't ever take the glory away from God. He killed, an, he killed a man in the Old Testament trying to steal that glory. The fact that God is light sets up a natural contrast with darkness. Right, if, light, if light start stands for righteousness and goodness, then darkness symbolizes what? Sin, evilness, wickedness. All right? And the message is, is that since God is light, he is perfect, he is holy, he is without sin, he is light. Why? Because there is no darkness in him. I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but this is going to be kind of a simple message, and I hope to drive this point down. The second thing we see about light is that the Holy Spirit is light. He is likened to in the Bible as what? Fire. Remember when the apostles got the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2? They had cloven fire above them. Right? When the children of Israel uh, were led in the wilderness, they were led by a pillar of fire at night. Right? Again, the Holy Spirit came upon the early church in Acts chapter 2. And in verse 3, it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? The Holy Ghost is a type or a picture of fire. All right? When believers have the Holy Spirit inside of them, and they are full of joy, they are full of love, they are witnessing, they love God, what do we say? Hey, look at, look at her, she's on fire, look at him, he's on fire for the Lord. That's the kind of words that we use. 
Our John Wesley used to say, let yourself on fire with passion and people will come for miles to see you burn. Why let your light so shine before men? God's word, the Bible, right? the Holy Bible is light. All right. Psalm chapter 119, verse 5 says, Thy word is a, a lamp, all right, unto my feet and a light unto my path. You say what? The world is darkness. The world is evil. The world's full of sin. And if you want to get through darkness, you need some light. And you've got to carry that lamp, which is the word of God, and he'll, he'll direct your feet on that path. All right? Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29 says, Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks in pieces? Now, God has some very important things to say about his book. And I've repeated this, and I repeat this usually in a couple of messages a year, because I, I believe in the book is the word of God. All right, The Bible, God's book is inspired. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Inspired means informed and directed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told the Apostle Paul what to write, what John what, what to write, what Moses what to write. They did not do that independently of themselves. The Holy Spirit, all scripture is inspired by God. All right. Peter says here, for prophecy came not in old time uh, by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved of the Holy Ghost. Job chapter 32, verse 8 says, but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. God gave man this book and, and to write it. And this Bible that we hold in our hands is preserved forever. Meaning that what they read those thousands of years ago, we are reading the same thing. Why? It is preserved. It hasn't been changed. It hasn't been altered. Yeah, the devil and man, they try to make changes and whatnot. But we have thousands and thousands of copies of, of, of the manuscripts. It's why? Because God said he would preserve it. Psalm 12, 7, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Preserved means saved from destruction or decay, saved from uh, injury, kept from evil, all right? God's words are also holy words. 2 Timothy 3.15 says, And from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Right? We could read a newspaper. That's not holy. We could read the dictionary. That's not holy. We could read a book, you know, a, a, a nonfiction or novels. That's not holy. But the Word of God is holy. It's perfect. It's preserved. It's inspired of God. It's the Word of God. It's not, the, it's not Hank's Bible. It's God's Word. Holy means properly. Whole in a perfect moral sense. Pure in heart. Applied to God. Perfect. Pure. Complete. That's why in my Bible it says, Holy Bible. All right? God's words are pure words. 12, Psalm 12, 6, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. And the idea is that it takes a, a smith seven times to pound that silver, pound, pound out the impurities, pound out the impurities, and make that pure. And the word of God that we have is pure. And I've said this before, God's inspiration plus God's preservation equals God's holy words, the Bible. And I believe that this book that I hold in my hand is God's perfect word. It has the answer to man. It has the answer to everything that we need. It has the answer to salvation. It's God's love letter to us. Another thing we know about, we see about light, is that uh, God's salvation is light. Uh, Psalm 36 verse 9 says, For with thee is the fountain of life, of, excuse me, of life. In thy light we shall see light. The gospel is light. I call writing to the church in 2 Corinthians 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. 
We've got the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is light. We are to let it shine before men, and there is no darkness or corruption in the gospel. Salvation is a saving life. It is available to all. Salvation is open to anybody and everybody throughout the world. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. God does not hide his light from anybody. It is out there every day for us to see. You can't hide it. All right, you're in bed at night and it's dark and you got to check your smartphone for the light and the, and the updates and the text and you push a button and what happens? Your whole phone lights up the room, okay? And that's a temporary thing, but God's light is always on for you, all right? He, God, he wants to give you that light. God's light is a free gift. God's light always shines in darkness. 2 Peter 3, 9, God says, Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's light is to everyone. Let's recap. God is light. The Holy Spirit is light. The Holy Bible is light. God's salvation, God's salvation is light. The gospel is the light. And God's light is a free gift. Well, what's the problem so far? So far, you can sound pretty positive, Pastor Hank, tell a few stories, explain to us what light means. Well, we got three problems. One, we got a dark, dirty, filthy, blind, false light out there. We have a false light. We got the true light, and then we got the false light. Who's the false light? That's right. You know, Mr. Horns and Pitchfork with a red tail. All right. Paul writes to the church in 2 Corinthians 11, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You say, why? Because everything that God does, Satan wants to try to copy and deceive. He'll give you a little light, but he's going to give you that light to trick you, to deceive you, to turn you away from God. He's going to try to steal God's light and to try to shine his own fake light. The devil will do anything and everything to keep you away from the true light. And another problem we have is that us humans, we often rebel against the light. Job chapter 24, verse 13 says, They are those that rebel against the light. They know not the ways thereof, nor abide in the paths thereof. Man is a sinner. Ever since uh, Adam and Eve, we can, you know, we can blame them, but it's in our lives too. We often rebel against God's light. All of the isms of the world, humanism, communism, agnosticism, atheism. Atheists don't even believe in the light. They believe in their own light. Paganism, Darwinism, evolution, consumerism, hedonism, polytheism, racism, sexism. All of these isms are false light from the devil. And they're going to try to hook and steal every one of you. The, hope, the third problem is that often we often... You know, blame the devil and the dirty world and the dark world. But the truth is, is that sadly humans love darkness. John chapter 3, verse 19. Right after John 3, 16. We got John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Three verses later. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now, don't raise your hands, but how many people have ever been to a bar? <laughs> is the bar lighted or is it dark? How do you know that? You've been to a bar? <laughs> Come on, we've all been to a bar. Come on, all right? You ever go to a bar at 2 o'clock in the afternoon for a little day drinking? And what happens? There's no lights on in the bar either. And you say, what's going on here? Men would rather love darkness and drink their booze and cheat on their spouses and they'd rather just sit in the darkness than sit in the light. Prostitution, the sex-orientated business, the sex shops, the strip clubs. What is that called? The red light district. Because back in the day when it was dark, 
if there was a little old red light in the front of the house, that meant that it was a house of prostitution. And you know, you, you can't you can't turn on a red fire during the daytime. Men would rather love darkness than love light. All right. Proverbs 6.23 says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are a way of life. God's laws and commandments are a light, and that's good for us. All right? You won't get a DWI or a sexually transmitted disease if you follow God's light. That's why Paul, writing to the church in 1 Thessalonians 5, says, Ye are all children of the light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night. We are not of darkness. Right? How many people, you know, you can break your head up, but having a little fun. How many people have been to a rock and roll concert? In fact, I don't even know, okay. I don't, I don't even know if we say rock and roll anymore. What's the, you know, what's the first thing? The show could be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon or 8 o'clock at night. You get your ticket, you sit down, you're 15,000 fans, woo! And what happens? Boof, all the lights go out. And back when I was a kid, uh, uh, before I was a Christian, I was an old rock and roller, and I went to see Van Halen and, and uh, I, uh, some of these groups. The first thing that everybody did once the lights went out was what? The old smoke pot. The old lit up their lights and they all smoking pot. No, woo nobody bothered nobody. Why? Because men love darkness rather than light. Hmm. How many people are... <laughs> I got some more. I right, come on. How many people have ever been to a disco or a, I know or a they call them dance clubs now? Yeah. And, and what happens at the disco and the dance club? What do they do? They turn the lights off and they got the one little disco light. You know why dance clubs are, are dark? Because you dance funny, that's why. If you, you turn on the lights and you saw a brother hang dance, you'd be like, wow, this guy, he, you know, he got no rhythm. Turn the lights down. We turn them off. We just want the disco light. In fact, there was a popular song back then. Uh, I don't know if it was in the seventies or eighties. Says, "Oh, I love the nightlife. I got the boogie on the disco round. Yeah." <laughs> Why? Because people, people love darkness rather than the light. All right. We, we all went through our little phase, all right? I, I was a rock and roll. I was not a disco guy, all right? <laughs> all right. But you got to love the darkness? No, you got to love the light. You got to love God. You got to love the Holy Ghost. You got to love his book. You got to love his salvation. You got to love his grace. And when we got loves, and, and, and we got to love God's son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you say why? Because Jesus Christ is light. Jesus said explicitly, directly, and you can't misquote this, in John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You want life? Choose Jesus. You want eternal life? Choose Jesus. You want to get out of darkness? Choose Jesus. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. This is an interesting verse. Maybe you put a little note or a star. He writes, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, S-U-N, not S-O-N, S-U, Son of Righteousness, arise with healings in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves out of the stall. And what Jesus is saying here is he is the only source of light. This is the only light that is visible. He is the spiritual S-U-N in our lives. He is the only light. And if you want salvation, you want eternal life, you want your sins forgiven, you want to live right, you don't want to walk in darkness, you follow that light, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I got an amen guy here today. But thank you, Lord. Jesus is the light that shines in the dark world. John chapter 1 Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with Him. All things were made by Him, speaking of Jesus, and without Him was not anything made that was in Him. In Him was life, 
and the life was the light of men. Right, that's why Paul wrote in Ephesians 5.14, Wherefore he saith, Awake if thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. I guess someone may be asking, what is, come on, light, light, light. What is light? Light is truth, light is Jesus, light is eternal life. Light is, light is the answer to everything. So the light is life, and it's available for the dark world. But how can, how can the world find out about this light? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Woo! <laughs> I'm like the X-Men, you know, like, breesh, breesh. I'm going to let the light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave me the light, and he told me to let it shine. He said in Matthew 5, 16, quote again, let your light so shine before men. All right? Us Christians are going to have to show this little light of mine. All right? We're going to have to let it shine. And we're to do good works which glorify our Father. When we pray for our enemies, that light shines. When we go the extra mile for someone, that light shines. When Christians are good citizens of the country, that light shines. All right? I'm getting a little tired. Everybody complain about the government. Hillary Trump, Hillary Trump, Biden is Biden. I don't care about them. I just care about Jesus Christ and his light and doing good things to the people of Long Island. On Sunday, when us Christians dress for the Lord and carry a Bible to church and our nosy neighbor sees us, our light is shining before them. When we pray before a meal in a restaurant, that light shines. When old Tim, Tim Tebow would pray or take a knee before the game, he let his little light shine. When we turn the other cheek and let someone hurt us, we let that light shine. When we invite a lost friend to church, that light shines. And when we tell others the most important thing, in our lives is the light Jesus Christ. That light shines. When we flee sin, that light shines. When we love our spouses and we love our children and we love our brothers and sisters in the Lord and church and when we love others, that light shines. Uh, Evelyn, I'm gonna I'm gonna give an invitation this morning. I'm gonna ask you to just jump on the piano and play a little something soft for us. And when we love God. And we want to do right, and we want to, you know, we want to help others. We let that little light shine. And just like we need physical light to survive on planet Earth, we need Jesus Christ, holy light, to have eternal life. And the way we get to the light is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? You can't buy the light. You can't go to Home Depot and say, I want the light, Jesus Christ. They'll sell you, they'll sell you a light, but the batteries will die in a day. All right? You, 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 can't, you can't get it in a store. All right? You can't buy the light. It's not for sale. Some people in the book of Acts, they tried to buy the light. Remember what happened to them? <laughs> they got in trouble. All right? But what must I do to obtain this light? What must I do to be saved? And if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor Hank, I'm a born-again Christian. I, I, I like what you're saying. I want to let my light shine. I, I, I'm a believer. Then praise God. I'm, 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 praise God. I'm happy for you. All right? And the question I have for you is this, this would be more of a challenge. I, I challenge you to shine your light more this week, next week. We've got fall. we got Christmas coming up. It's a good time of the year to shine that light. Right, are you doing good works? so others can see, and that God gets the glory. Uh, we ought to reflect his light in a dark world that is darkened by sin. We ought to witness to others. We ought to tell others about Jesus Christ. We ought to lead others to God's light, God's salvation. Jesus himself said in John 3, 3, I say unto you that a man must be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. You need to become born again. You need that light. The Bible says there is only one way to the light, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way. 
If there was a lot of different lights, then I'd preach that. But there's only one way, one light, one Savior, one salvation. That's Jesus Christ. Right, Kendrick? Amen. You can't work your way. Getting baptized, joining the church, putting a lot of money in the plate. That may help us, but that's not going to save you. Ephesians chapter 2 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only work you got to do, and it's not even a work, it's just faith. Faith is not a work. You're not putting your hand up to the plow or, or you're not. It's just faith. God, I, I believe what the preacher said. I, I want this slide. Except Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. I trust you. I put my faith in you. And God's grace comes in and he saves you. All right? What do I got to do to become born again? Just have that faith. Do business with God. Admit that you're a sinner. If all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you must repent. Jesus said, Verily, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Part of that faith and trust in God is doing a little business with Him. You need to believe. You need that faith. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but of everlasting life. That's faith. Romans 10, 9 says, For thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And through a simple prayer of faith, invite Jesus into your life and become your Savior. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's it. Hey, it's pretty simple. Not, not too complicated here. Now, you don't got to do this, that, the other thing. And work and just have some faith. What's a prayer that I can pray except Jesus Christ is my Savior? You can say, dear God, I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. I believe that Jesus shed his precious blood and died for my sin. I'm willing to turn from my sin and I now invite Christ into my life through my faith, Lord, as my personal Savior. And you have God's saving promise in John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. It's just faith. Paul says here in Ephesians 5, 8, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are the light of the world. Right, once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit of God enters inside of you, and then, boom, light, Holy Spirit light, Jesus light, God's light, and you're to shine, shine that light before men. Psalms 36, 9 says, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light we shall see light. Last verse here, Isaiah 2, 5, O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Except for the Lord Jesus Christ today, pray. Let me know about it. All right? And when you leave church today, let your light so shine upon this world. Amen? Amen. All right, thank you, everyone. Nice little piano invitation there. All right. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask the choir to come up. And I'm asking Pope and, and Kenrick also. We're going to sing that song, This Little Light of Mine, one more time. I, I like it. It will theme today. All right? And uh, we'll sing it one more time. If you want to, hey, anyone wants to join the choir, come on up. Let's everybody stand. And then we'll have a little prayer and a benediction. And we'll go have our nice international food festival lunch. <laughs>
like to know if Brother Kendrick, you're up there. Why don't you pray? The choir will bless us with a benediction, and then we'll all exit my left. You all right? And the International <laughs> Festival 2019, man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity that we can come before you, Lord, and give you praise and give you glory and give you honor. Let's do to your name, Father.